God's doing great things in the earth. And this ministry is just one small part of what God's doing from one end of the earth. The Bible says that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the glory of the Lord just flows through it. In fact, the glory of the Lord is going to manifest itself in these days, and we're going to see an outpouring of the Spirit as never before. And I'm truly excited about that. Different things are going to be happening, different phases that God's calling every ministry to and every church to in order to enter into that anointing so that the Spirit of God can be outpoured. So Christians, you need to be ready for what God's doing in the ministry of God as a whole all through the earth, let alone in your own church. I'd like to just share a tape offer before we go into the program tonight. There's many people that need deliverance. And the key to their deliverance in many areas is finding out who they are in Christ Jesus. And we have a tape offer this week, and it's called New Creation Realities Number 1. And I'd like to just share this with you because it's been a real blessing to many people. The offer number is number 49, and many people have commented. I think this tape was made, in fact, January 31st, 1982. And we've had many comments that when people found out and heard through this series of tapes who they were in Christ Jesus, the authority of the believer and, and, and different things in this area, that their lives were changed. And so we want to make that available to you. This is the first of a four-tape series called the New Creation Reality Series. And this is tape offer number 49. So you order that anytime you would get ready, praise God, you just write us and uh, you can send in any size offer and it doesn't matter. And if you don't have the money, we want you to have this Word of God because the Word of God's anointed and it will set you free. So again, that's New Creation Realities, tape offer number 49. This is the first of a four-tape series. So I want you to get all the tapes so that you can have the Word of God ministered to you as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we go on here tonight. I'd just like to share a few things. I think it was last week, Elaine... Uh, that we shared with Pastor Doug Harris mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about commitment and the important, importance of uh, the fact that Christians need to be committed, they need to be dedicated and the Spirit of God really moved for that program. The Lord sort of wants us to carry over in that same area in the area of steadfastness tonight for a few moments before we go on with the program. Basically we want to start out with a scripture here that's uh, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. The Bible says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I thank God that scriptures like that are in the Bible. The Word says again, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That reminds me of other scriptures such as all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible with God. Without God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible to you. I just get excited by the fact that God hasn't left us, left us destitute. So many Christians think that you need to go through life weary and just, you know, downbeaten and downtrodden and just barely getting along. But I don't believe that. I believe as Isaiah 54 says that no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And that's part of the reason that we're promoting this tape series here too on New Creation Realities because when you find out who you are in Christ, you'll find out that Christ has already provided for you a rightful position of victory through Himself through the new birth. And the next scripture goes on to say, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, how can you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord? Because, praise God, we're thanking God He's given us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. But there's a key here. You've got to be steadfast. And to be steadfast means to be settled. You need to become settled in your faith. You need to become firm in your faith. You need to be convinced of the fact that once you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is the direction I'm going. This is the avenue I'm taking. I'm going to please my Heavenly Father from day one right on through my entire earth walk till I enter into eternity. I'm going to please God. And steadfastness basically comes about, first of all, by an attitude of your mind. Just uh, you've got to determine in your heart this is the way you're going to be. And again, I'll say that last part of that verse. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. He didn't say try to be steadfast or think about it. He said, be ye steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. So I must determine in my heart if I'm going to please God that I'm going to be steadfast mainly because the scriptures point out for me to be steadfast. And then and only then am I in a position where I'm pleasing to God because I'm doing what he wants me to do. As the word says in James 1.22, therefore 
uh, be not hearers of the word only, but doers. We got to do what God's word has told us to do. Elaine, I know when you, I met you, uh, a matter of possibly seven, eight years ago, uh, you had met Jesus Christ. And uh, you didn't know I was going to mention this, but no. the, the thought just came up about steadfastness. And uh, yeah. when I met you, uh, you weren't necessarily, and you shared it with people, it's not like I'm putting you on the spot, mm -hmm. you weren't necessarily steadfast. What happened in your life after I met you, basically, that caused you to change? First, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. That helped a lot. And you got me into the Word. I was saved when you met me, but I, was, uh, I didn't want to be a fanatic. I remember I told mm -hmm. you that. Right. First I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and then you were kind of a teacher to me. We would read the Bible together, and the more I read it and thought about it and meditated it, I began to see it work in my life. And I decided, hey, I'm going to get steadfast because mm -hmm. <laughs> this is working. Right. And I noticed one thing, the point I wanted to bring out here is when you started to become mm -hmm. steadfast in your faith towards God, that your life started to change. Mm -hmm. Is that the truth? Sure, I started to get the victory. Right. Like what happened this morning, you know, when you said all things are possible to he that believeth, mm -hmm. that was on my mind the very second that you said that. And I thought, yeah, that's true, but that's only true when you're persuaded. Right. When you're fully persuaded that this is the truth, the Bible. And so I thought of what happened this morning, that the kids woke up and they were going to go to their preschool today. but. Uh, Jeremiah had uh, a flushed countenance, you know, feverish type of look, and he said, I'm cold. He kept telling me that all morning. So we laid hands on him, and I decided, well, I'm fully persuaded that he's healed, and we're going to go through with this like we do. Once a week, we take them there. And um, I said, now, Father, I'm trusting that this is the right thing to, to take him to school. And I did, and I told the teacher, um, he says he's cold, but I believe he's going to have a great day today. And I left it at that. And praise God, you know, when I went back there to get them, Amen. he was not red in the face. He hadn't been cold all day. He had a fun day. But see, this is the way the Lord led me to do it. I wouldn't, right. under no circumstances, would I send a sick child to school, right. you know. Right. But I sought the Lord. What should I do? And, and the Lord said, basically, trust me, you know, are, are you convinced that the word's true or not? And, okay. I, and I said, yes, so he'll go. Now, over the years, you've become fully persuaded. And, of course, we're always coming more into the realization of being fully persuaded that what God has promised he's able to perform. But you make a heart commitment to being steadfast <laughs> in the word and the ways of God and the things of God has caused you to come into that place where mm -hmm. you're fully persuaded now. Had you mm -hmm. not committed yourself to being steadfast in the beginning, you would never beco have become mm -hmm. fully persuaded. And this changes people's lives. In fact, I'd like to share another scripture over in the book of Colossians. Brother Paul was writing the church here, and he says, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now, Paul took note of the fact that, praise God, the church at Colossae, they had some problems because he got on about that, but he took note of the fact that they were steadfast in their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he was pleased. He remarked about it. He made a good comment. It's just like Jesus when uh, uh, there was a, a certain person that he, he remarked about his faith. He said, oh, man, great is your faith. And so great faith and a steadfastness in your faith moves God. It pleases God. God hasn't called us to be a bunch of Casper milk toasts to sort of, you know, come into a Christian experience and just sort of treat it lightly. But we need to become steadfast. And you can't do that until you see that the Word commands you or orders you to do so. And then by an act of your will, you get in agreement with that and say, well, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to become steadfast in my faith towards God. I'm going to become determined in my heart. Would you like to share another thought on that, Elaine? Definitely. Praise God. David, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. I want to read to you uh, what David had to say about this, all right? Psalm 57, verse 7, David said, My heart is fixed, O God. God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Fixed, steadfast, persuaded, whatever. Psalm 112, verses 7 and 8. 
He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. And that one verse that he shall not be afraid of evil tidings, I've stood on that a lot over the years, Very you know, true. like when you get a phone call in the middle of the night and right away you get the thought, oh, somebody died, somebody died. You just, as you answer that phone, you just say, I am not afraid of evil tidings. My heart is fixed, Amen. trusting in the Lord. No matter what that news is on the phone, see, it's not going to move me. You've got to be convinced. I mean, if somebody did die, well, heck, I'll go raise them from the dead. You know? Amen. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. Some people will say, well, you, you're really way out. A woman well, wanted to raise somebody from the dead. I mean, that you know, if you can it's believe, possible. it's possible. Sure, that's you right. Know. Amen. Well, they'll get the idea as we go along here. Praise <laughs> God. But you know, it's true. And you can't, again, become steadfast in your faith towards God. You can't become pleasing this area to God until you see it. the Bible commands you to do so. As David said here, my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. That didn't just sort of fall on him like apples out of a tree. But he had determined in his heart when God started to become real to him that this is the way I'm going. I'm going to serve God. My heart's fixed. I'm trusting in the Lord. It came about as he developed that attitude in his heart that that's the way I'm going to go and that's all there is to it. And I believe every Christian today needs to do that. You need to become steadfast in your faith towards God by determining right now in Jesus' name that that's the way I'm going. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to become settled in my faith so I'll be more pleasing to God. There's a great job that God's called every one of us to do and praise God you're a part of it. So as you continue in your earth walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. At this time, we'd like to go to a song by Brother Tim Kaiser, so I'd like you to just settle back and listen to this song. I'll tell you, Tim Kaiser's from uh, Zion Evangelistic Temple out in Clawson, and God's anointed his voice, so just sit back as the Spirit of God ministers to you now in Jesus' name. song of the Lord. Praise Him with instruments. Praise Him with music. Praise to
gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise come unto him with singing and worship his name Jehovah Praise God. Good music always blesses my soul. Praise God. I appreciate that. You know, there's one more scripture before I introduce a good friend of mine here. In the book of Hebrews, I believe it's the 10th chapter, the 36th verse, somewhere in there. The Bible says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And then it goes on to say, But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition or destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And we believe that once a person commits his life to Jesus Christ, that that's a direction he's got to go in if he's planning on making eternity his home. You don't just get, quote, saved, ask Jesus to come in your life and just sit back and continue to drink and, and, and doing your thing and acting like the devil and like you always been. God's called you to a commitment. He's called you to be steadfast and unmovable, and you need to get yourself in line with the Word of God. Amen. Pastor Amen. Tony Mancina from New Life Fellowship Amen. of Believers, I hear. Amen. Praise God, brother. <laughs> Good to uh, have you here Good. today, Tony. Amen. It's great. Did God drop a thought about that in your heart? Yeah. As, so we it, as, a, as we were sitting here listening to the, watching the broadcast and that, uh, uh, God just began to speak to me that Abraham was a man that was fully persuaded. Right. And the only reason that he was fully persuaded is that he tapped into the, the resource, which is God, mm -hmm. who it says that God who quickeneth the dead, he calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay? Yeah. And the only reason that Abraham could do that is because, of, because he had that quality of being fully persuaded. Praise and uh, uh, he was fully persuaded in the fact that God was able to perform that which he, he had promised to him. And he didn't stagger or was immovable to the promise that God had made to him. And uh, we, we quote a lot from Abraham and, and uh, know that he is the father of the faithful, mm -hmm. those that, uh, of, the, of the covenant that he made with, with God and that we, he, he struck with, with the Lord concerning his son Isaac and just a whole analogy there of, of his son being the typified Christ in that. Um, but that we need to be fully persuaded in our walk. If we're not fully persuaded, uh, the soon as the trial, temptation, whatever come our mm -hmm. way, we'll faint. We'll, okay. we'll draw back and, we'll, and, and, and who knows what would happen to us. But if we're strong and know that God is, is able to do what He performed and, and have no question and no doubt about it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, praise God. It, it, just as you were saying, the, there's no limit. There's right. no limit. No limit to what God can do in, in our lives. I know there's times when uh, certain trials and tests may come up against us that the devil throws us, and the only way we're going to get through them is if we grit our teeth and if we <laughs> determine in our heart that I'm going to be steadfast and I'm getting through this thing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I think any Christian that has a sloppy attitude uh, about this is not going to get through that trial or test. Then they're going to fail. Uh, they may fall into sin or whatever else, and they're going to think that God failed them. Is that true, that God sure. would fail a person? No, He wouldn't, fa he wouldn't <laughs> fail us. <laughs> he never fails us. The only, the only reason that we get that idea that God fails us is that um, uh, the devil would throw condemnation at us. Right. He'd throw fear at us, uh, whatever he tried to put our way. The Scripture says in, in Romans, the 8th chapter, there's no condemnation unto him that believes in God, okay, or Amen. trusts in the Lord. There's no condemnation to the believer. And uh, we've got to realize that we're not condemned. Okay? Right. And once we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we're no longer a sinner. Okay? We're saved. And we don't dwell on the fact that we sin, but we dwell on the fact that God is our Father. Amen. And too many Christians are dwelling on the sin factor rather right. than that they're saved. And right. they're too sin conscious rather than Father God conscious. God. You know? And if they would get to the fact and know that they're not condemned, though they fall, James tells us what? That if we confess our faults to God, that He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sin and all our unrighteousness and make us clean again before His sight. And uh, we can't get into that, that 
b rubber ball type thing, bouncing right. back and forth right. on God. Right. But being steadfast again, knowing who you are in Christ is very important right. to this type of being persuaded and being fully confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Tony, even before you said that about who we are in Christ, the Lord remind me of this tape off again, really? because this gets right back to what these tapes are all about, this right. four tape series, who we are in Christ. Uh -huh. And a person can become steadfast and unmovable uh -huh. once he finds out who he is in Christ, because uh -huh. then he can find out who he really is in the sight of God, because too many people still think of themselves in the light of how they always have. Because uh -huh. of that, they fail, they miss it. But uh -huh. God's called us to a life of victory. As the scripture says, but thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory right. through our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Tony, I know we've, we've talked a lot in the past about uh, and preached messages about, you know, drawing back and, and the, the commitment in a Christian's life. And I know you've known the Lord for some mm -hmm. time now. And uh, God's raised you up. And I remember on a program a couple months ago, I, I asked you the question, uh, were you always a pastor? Mm -hmm. You know, right. and we laughed and said, well, no, God brought you into that. Right. But uh, it all comes down to the reason you're a pastor now is because you were steadfast in your commitment from the time you got saved. Because of that, God raised you up. And uh, I'm excited about that. Why don't you just share about that for a moment? Well, you know, then again, when God, when God begins to c call a person in his life, uh, a lot of times a person will want to grab that and run with it. You know, mm -hmm. as you've seen you know, in times sure. past with just you know, dealing with people. And people have got to know that if God's got a call in their life, that they need to just move along with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And they need to be just doing, being a doer of the Word. Mm -hmm. That's very important, being a doer of the Word. God has been speaking to me just in the last couple of weeks about being an intercessor. Right. How that is going to be the victory, is going to be a big part of the victory and, and a, a, a cause your walk in the Lord to, to go in leaps and bounds. Jude 20 says, you know, beloved, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit or in the Holy Ghost. That's how we build ourselves up. Well, the Spirit, Scripture in Corinthians says, well, if I pray in the Spirit, I don't pray with my understanding. Right. Well, your Spirit's praying and that you're building your inner man up. And you don't necessarily need to know with your mind what your spirit's praying because your spirit is making intercession. You're communing with God. And to get back to that is that people need to do the word, being a doer of the word um, in a sense of a call in your life and, and just, just taking it a step at a time, allowing God to open opportunity for you to move into those, those areas of ministry that you may believe that he's calling you to uh, and not trying to rush things and, and, and trying to push God and try to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Too many times we want to try to make it happen. The, 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 the call is legitimate. What God's moving in your life is legitimate, but we want to force it to happen, right. make it happen. Right. And God's not in it, us making it happen. But right. as we allow the Spirit of God to lead us, it'll definitely come to pass. Again, Praise it's building that persuasion up, taking right. a step, being a doer of the Word, building up that confidence. I'm confident of the fact that I was called. I yeah. was confident. Yeah. I have no question in, my, in right. my mind or even in my spirit that I was called to be a teacher of the, of the Word right. of God and called to be a minister of God. No question. I, I, I have that confidence to the fact that you could, they could put me before, you know, uh, the, uh, a board or a, a right. firing squad yeah. and ask me, you know, uh, what, you know, do, are you called? And I'd have to tell them, yes, you know, right. I'm called. Right. Praise God. And I'm that confident. I know within my spirit. And we need to build that confidence only by being a doer of the Word. Just being a doer of the word. The word is, is the key. Go back to the go back to the word. Paul says, if an angel tells me other than what I've received from God, it's an angel of light, and I know where right. it came from. It came right. from the pits of hell. Right. You know, and I can't can't be moved by what I even see a vision of. If the vision is contrary to the word, throw the vision out. Right. It ain't no good. It's worthless. It's useless. Dump it and go on. <laughs> really, dump it and go on. Experiences, experiences right. are are real. A real kicker to people. They have an experience, and they'll tie that experience in with maybe what God was 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 saying. God does not give us an experience just for the thrill. He gives us an experience for us to learn and to use that as a training tool in our life. For for instance, the gift of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God doesn't give that to give you goosebumps to right. run up and down your back, but He gives you that as a tool to use in winning souls and in your ministry as far as being a soul winner in this earth, Amen. interceding for people, Amen. interceding for the nations. Amen. 
Praise and that's God. what God wants us to do. Come together and start growing, becoming steadfast, and start to intercede. People, that is important that we start interceding. Interceding for this program, interceding for your nation, interceding, as the word says, for kings and for all that are in authority and for all men that are over us in any way. We got to stand in the gap and intercede. It's only you and me, Christian, that's going to bring to pass the will of God in the earth as we become obedient to what God's called us to do. There's many people as we tie up this program right now that have been watching tonight. You don't know what we're talking about because you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said in John 3, 3, Ye must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God, but a new creature can. And you can become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus by giving your life to Him. You call the number that's on the screen right now, 296-7100, and there will be people man on those phones for hours tonight. Yes, people will be on that uh, on the phone lines to counsel you for hours tonight. So you just call that number and they'll lead you to Christ. I'd also like to mention this time that uh, Father's Day, June 19th at our church, if you want to call it for directions, uh, the Spirit of God's called me to give my personal testimony. We want to invite you to come out to that service if, as, you, as you feel led and uh, just hear what the Spirit of God's done in my life. God's doing great things in the earth. You and I both are a part of this. Elaine, Pastor Tony, and I just love you, and we appreciate you. We thank you for everything you've done, for sitting there tonight and listening to what God's telling you through us. Remember, God loves you, and He'll always be there. So seek His face forevermore. New Life is an outreach ministry of New Life Fellowship of Believers and is supported by the faithful offerings of the viewing audience. We greatly appreciate your earnest prayers and financial support and agree with you for a return of God's blessing in your life as you give to Him out of a cheerful heart. God's best belongs to you as you continue to place Him first in all you do. Correspondence of any nature may be mailed to New Life Ministries, Post Office Box 581, St. Clair Shores, Michigan, 48080. You will receive a tax-deductible receipt for any contribution made to New Life. We love you and thank you for sharing in this ministry. Hi, my name is Pastor Tony Mancini of New Life Fellowship of Believers. We're opening our day school this fall, Zoe Christian Academy, and are presently taking applications for kindergarten through fourth grade. For an informational brochure about enrollment and the school, call 294-9291.